When you spend a lot of time at home, you need a quality desk setup. So let me show you mine. All right. Obviously, we have to talk about the desk. That's the centerpiece of this thing. This is a desk from a brand called Artifox. Not sponsored. I just like them. <laughs> I've always liked the desk and I've always loved the design. I uh, really early on kind of clocked them as, I felt like one of the best highly minimalist, beautiful desks that exist out there. Like you can, I mean, look, a desk is a desk. You just need legs and a flat surface. And and for a long time, I didn't have one. Like when I was in college and stuff and in the dorms, like I had something of a desk in my space, but you know how, how a dorm desk is. Kind of sucks. <laughs> it's not a thing to write home about. It's not exactly, uh, you know, not something you'd recommend or want to use long-term. But I always saw this in my, you know, in ads and everything. And I was like, I thought it was so beautiful. One of the things I really love about it is it's really not that big. This is not a, a large space. I think it's like, I know it's like 29 inches high. I think it's about, oh God, I hope I'm not terribly wrong. I'm gonna need to find out. We're getting the tape measure. Not gonna make an entire video on the subject and then come back and realize that I was like an entire foot off confusing my whole audience. All right, let's see here. We're weighing in at 52, 52 inches, which is like, you know, it's a decent amount. It's not crazy wide. You have much wider desks. You have desks that can be as wide as a table, but this one's not. But I like it like this. It's neat. When you have a massive desk, it just starts to eat into the room and make it feel like you're, you know, you don't want the desk to eat up the room. You want the desk to kind of play into it. You want to feel cozy, connected, organized as you're grinding without, you know, feeling like you're living in an, <laughs> living in an office space. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> not be too feral. Okay, so a couple features about this desk I really love beyond its overall shape and design. Always a big minimalism guy. I feel like that goes without saying, but yeah. So a couple other things I love. This headphone hook. I don't know why so many desks don't come with these things. Just, just, it's simple. Just put a piece of wood. That way I can hang, you know, can hang my headphones and not have to worry about them cluttering up the desk or anything else. And they're pretty much out of view. I guess Neutron could get to them if he wanted to, but he's pretty well behaved. He's, uh, I don't know, every time I mention my name, he looks at me, he's like, are you accusing me of something? So yes, the headphone hook is, is, is pretty awesome. I don't know how I got up and forgot to mention this. This is one of the sickest parts of my desk setup is cord management. Cord management is a science. <laughs> You need to know what you're doing. You need to do it right. This desk, I mean, you have this metal grate back here that looks very unassuming, ideally, right? Um, but it has all these Velcro straps that you can rope in these holes. And on the other side, you can probably see faintly, there's like power outlets, charging cords, whatever else is down there. It's, if you look from the other end, it looks kind of chaotic. It looks a little messy, but from this side, you're totally fine. It looks great. And uh, everything is well secured. It can't get in neutrons way. You wouldn't really know there's like a zillion cords back there as a result. Good cord management, crucial component of success, you have to do it right. Now we're moving up top. We're talking about what's on the desk. Yeah, a good amount to say here. So listen, let me tell you something. If you want to be a more productive person, if you want to get out of a rut, if you want to feel better immediately, the first thing you should do, it's not hit the gym, it's not drink a bunch of water, although those are all fine. First thing you do is you clean your space. When you are in a dirty environment, your head is cluttered. I know it's cliche and everyone says that, but it's really true. You have to understand that the organization and your immediate environment is going to determine so much more of your mental, your outlook on life, in your day, your productivity, your motivation, it's going to impact all those things so much more than you realize. You are your environment. So you have to have it tight, right? And basically what I've tried to do with this desk space is like have as little on it as possible. When a table's clear, when I don't have a zillion things in the way, I'm a lot more focused. I just, I mean, I write better emails. <laughs> like I, I, I'm a better texter. Like I handle, you know, creative ideas better just because there isn't clutter and there isn't visual distraction. Something to remember, people often forget this by the way, but one of the reasons why minimalism has caught on so much, often people will roast it and be like, oh, yeah, minimalism is so boring, there's nothing there, is that you need to understand that your brain is a computer. And every time that you have something visually complex in the way, it has to process that. It like, takes more effort to process. And effort doesn't necessarily mean like solving a difficult math problem, right? Like effort can also mean like cognitive RAM. If you see something that's perfectly symmetrical, it's, it's pretty easy for your brain to process that information and it, it's pleasant in a sense, right? Maybe not exclusively because it has less RAM, but that's definitely a key component of it, right? And the same goes for having a desk space that's super cluttered, is your brain is constantly processing and, all right, this is there, this is there. Like you're constantly being sidetracked by it. Even if you're not like deliberately picking stuff up constantly and using it, your brain still has to process it visually, which is a lot. So a cleaner space is just easier on the brain, easier on the eyes, and that makes it so much easier to get work done. It's not just purely aesthetic preference. Like there is, there is some cognitive, I guess, biology that plays into it. So what's going on top of the desk space of, of, the, of the little stuff I have on there, what do I have, 
right? So obviously you gotta have something to charge your phone. Also, sometimes I might use my phone if I'm FaceTiming or having a conversation and also looking at my screen. So I wanna be able to have something like this that will allow me to mount my phone without you know, laying it flat or letting it get lost. So this charges, but this also charges my AirPods and behind here, it charges this guy too, which is pretty dope. Uh, your, your Apple Watch, that is. It's also nice because if I wanna take it on the go, this thing folds up just like that. So it is convenient for being on the go. Oh God, let me try to fix this now. There we go. And it's like, you know, it's flexible. You can move it around and stuff. It's sick. All right, so what's next? So, uh, you know, classic keyboard and trackpad situation, nothing to write home, not much to write home about here. The monitor and the tech choices, while important, are kind of basic. Uh, I'm a simple man, so I, like, I'm using a MacBook Pro, you know? Not much to say, not much to say there, y'all know what that is. Um, and I'm using a Samsung M8 monitor, which is, I think it's, it's technically classified as like a smart monitor because it has like built-in Netflix functionality, which I'll be honest, I don't really use. But amazingly, it's one of the few monitors that can seamlessly connect to my MacBook Pro and not cause some kind of visual input issue. I cannot tell you how many problems I've had with other monitors before that will, re that will remain nameless. Um, but the Samsung M8 does well. And the Samsung M8 is also just like pretty. You know what I mean? Like it fits the aesthetic. It's got a nice white bezel on it. Looks nice, performs well. It's 4K res. What more can you ask for? So simple computer, simple monitor, nothing surprising there. Up top, obviously we have two speakers. I got these fairly recently for the seemingly lame reason that they are white, but that's not actually the only reason. They do perform really well. I had some older speakers up top here for like the better part of four years? Yeah, because I got them in college. And the wire then was so frayed that when I tried to unplug them, it almost started a fire. So I'm really glad that I replaced them. These things needed, they needed to go and these needed to be the replacement. So they're also elevated so that the sound waves are like designed to hit your ear exactly like the right, I guess, altitude, which is cool. I love that they thought of things like that. Uh, and then you have a little plant that is definitely not real, but looks cute, gets the job done. One of my favorite features about this desk in particular is the riser system is very efficient if you have like a computer. So underneath here, you can't see it as well, but I'll show you a different angle. Underneath here, you have a USB-C cord and you also have like a headphone jack. Both of those things are gonna play into to the computer, obviously giving it sound. This cable charges it and beams the screen to my monitor. So, you know, the, the, the computer is reachable, but it's not in the way, right? It's, it's tucked underneath, it looks clean and symmetrical and doesn't cause any issues. There's also, and I'll, again, sh I'll show you a different angle of this, but there are also holes that come in through here like you can see these cords over here, right? They come from underneath and there's these little slots that you can put them in so I can charge stuff and keep cords out of the way. I have this little felt cord stopper here that prevents them from flying out, you know, or like sinking under <laughs> underneath the hole and getting lost. Um, so the shelving system is awesome. And if I have like additional stuff here, so this remote powers the monitor and I'll typically just set it in here, out of sight, out of mind. It's not on the way, but it's still accessible and that's crucial. So that's what we have going on on top of the desk. 